Hello, and welcome back to Lone Wolf. Struggle is an unavoidable part of self-employment. Nothing ever comes easy when you are trying to build towards your dreams. Difficulties and hardship will be your constant companions. But there have been people before you. There have been people who passed through a similar struggle as you are doing now. And there are people who are facing it right now. You are certainly not alone in your struggle. So with that thought let's get started. Chapter 2. Biological Classification Since the dawn of civilization, there have been many attempts to classify living organisms. It was done instinctively not using criteria that were scientific, but born out of a need to use organisms for our own use for food, shelter and clothing. Aristotle was the earliest to attempt a more scientific basis for classification. He used simple morphological characters to classify plants into trees, shrubs and herbs. He also divided animals into two groups, those which had red blood and those that did not. In Linnaeus's time, a two-kingdom system of classification with Planty and Animalia kingdoms was developed that included all plants and animals respectively. This system was used till very recently. This system did not distinguish between the eukaryotes and prokaryotes unicellular and multicellular organisms and photosynthetic, green algae, and non-photosynthetic, fungi, organisms. Classification of organisms into plants and animals was easily done and was easy to understand in spite, a large number of organisms did not fall into either category. Hence the two kingdom classification used for a long time was found inadequate. A need was also felt for including, besides gross morphology other characteristics like cell structure, nature of wall, mode of nutrition habitat, methods of reproduction, evolutionary relationships, etc. Classification systems for the living organisms have hence, undergone a several changes over time. Though plant and animal kingdoms have been a constant under all different systems, the understanding of wet groups organisms be included under these kingdoms have been changing. The number and nature of other kingdoms have also been understood differently by different scientists over time. R. H. Whitaker, 1969, proposed a five-kingdom classification. The kingdoms defined by him were named Minera, Protista, Fungi Planti and Animalia. The main criteria for classification used by him include cell structure, thallus organization, mode of nutrition reproduction and phylogenetic relationships. You can see in table 2.1 on your screen which gives a comparative account of different characteristics of the five kingdoms. Let us look at this five kingdom classification to understand the issues and considerations that influence the classification system. Your classification systems included bacteria, blue-green algae, fungi, mosses, ferns, gymnosperms and the angiosperms under plants. The character that unified this whole kingdom was that all the organisms included hottest cell wall in their cells. This placed together groups which widely differed in other characteristics. It brought together the prokaryotic bacteria and blue-green algae with other groups which were eukaryotic. It also grouped together the unicellular organisms and the multicellular ones say, for example, Chlamydomonas and Spiragira were placed together under algae. The classification did not differentiate between the heterotrophic group fungi and the autotrophic green plants, thought they also showed a characteristic difference in their walls, composition the fungi had chitin in their walls, while the green plants had a cellulosic cell wall. When such characteristics were considered, the fungi were placid in a separate kingdom kingdom fungi. All prokaryotic organisms were grouped together under kingdom Minera, and the unicellular eukaryotic organisms were placed in kingdom Protista. Kingdom Protista has brought together Chlamydomonas, Chlorella, earlier placed in algae within plants, and both having cell walls, with Paramosium and AMOEBA which were earlier placed in the animal kingdom, which lack it. It has put together organisms which, in earlier classifications, were placed in different kingdoms. This happened because the criteria for classification changed. This kind of changes will take place in future too depending on the improvement in our understanding of characteristics and evolutionary relationships. Over time, an attempt has been made to evolve a classification system, which reflects not only the morphological, physiological and reproductive similarities, but is also phylogenetic, i.e. is, based on evolutionary relationships. I end this chapter, we will study characteristics of kingdoms Minera Protista and Fungi of the Whitaker system of classification. The kingdoms Planty and Animalia, commonly referred to as plant and animal kingdoms, respectively, will be dealt with separately in chapters 3 and 4. 2.1 Kingdom Minera Spore Flagellum Coxie Bacilli Spirilla Vibrio, Figure 2.1 on your screen, Bacteria of different shapes Bacteria are the sole members of the Kingdom Minera. They are the most abundant microorganisms. Bacteria occur almost everywhere. Hundreds of bacteria are present in a handful of soil. They also live in extreme habitats such as hot springs, deserts, snow and deep oceans, where very few other life forms can survive. Many of them live in or on other organisms, as parasites. Bacteria are grouped under four categories based on their shape. The spherical coccus. coxi, the rod shaped bacillus. bacilli, the comma shaped vibrium vibrio, and the spiral spirillum. Though the bacterial structure is very simple, they are very complex in behavior. 
Compared to many other organisms, bacteria as a group show the most extensive metabolic diversity. Some of the bacteria are autotrophic, i.e., they synthesize their own food from inorganic substrates. They may be photosynthetic autotrophic or chemosynthetic autotrophic. The vast majority of bacteria are heterotrophs, i.e., they do not synthesize their own food, but depend on other organisms or on dead organic matter for food. 2.1.1 Archibacteria These bacteria are special since they live in some of the most harsh habitats such as extreme salty areas, halophiles, hot springs, thermocytophiles and marshy areas, methanogens. Archibacteria differ from other bacteria in having a different cell wall structure, and this feature is responsible for their survival in extreme conditions. Methanogens are present in the guts of several ruminant animals such as cows and buffaloes, and they are responsible for the production of methane, biogas, from the dung of the sea animals. 2.1.2 Eubacteria There are thousands of different eubacteria or trubacteria. They are characterized by the presence of a rigid cell wall, and if model, a flagellum. Thus in eubacteria, also referred to as blue-green algae have chlorophyll, a similar to green plants and rafatosynthetic autotrophs, figure 2.2. Thus in bacteria are unicellular colonial or filamentous marine or terrestrial algae. The colonies are generally surrounded by gelatinous sheath. They often form blooms in polluted water bodies. Some of these organisms can fix atmospheric nitrogen in specialized cells called heterocysts, e.g., Nostoc and Anevena. Chemosynthetic autotrophic bacteria oxidize various inorganic substances such as nitrates, nitrites and ammonia, and use the release of energy for their ATP production. They play a great role in recycling nutrients like nitrogen, phosphorus, iron, and sulfur. Heterotrophic bacteria are the most abundant in nature. The majority are important decompressors. Many of them have a significant impact on human affairs. They are helpful in making curd from milk production of antibiotics, fixing nitrogen in legume, roots, etc. Some are pathogens causing damage to human beings, crops, farm animals, and pets. Color, typhoid, tetanus, citrus canker are well known diseases caused by different bacteria. Bacteria reproduce mainly by fission, FIGURE 2.3. Sometimes, under unfavorable conditions, they produce spores. They also reproduce by a sort of sexual reproduction, by adopting a primitive type of DNA transfer from one bacterium to the other. The mycoplasmas are organisms that completely lack a cell wall. They are the smallest living cells known and can survive without oxygen. Many mycoplasma are pathogenic in animals and plants. 2.2 Kingdom Protista All single-celled eukaryotes are placed under Protista, but the banderas of this kingdom are not well defined. What may be a photosynthetic protestant to one biologist may be a plant to another. In this book Wankled chrysophytes, the anaflagellates, euglenoids, slime molds and protozoans under Protista. Members of Protista are primarily aquatic. This kingdom forms a link with the others dealing with plants, animals and fungi. Being eukaryotes, the protestant cell body contains a well-defined nucleus and other membrane-bound organelles. Some have flagella or cilia. Protists reproduce asexually and sexually by a process involving cell fusion and zygote formation. 2.2.1 Chrysophytes This group includes diatoms and golden algae, desmids. They are found in freshwater as well as in marine environments. They are microscopic and float passively in water currents, plankton. Most of them are photosynthetic. In diatoms the cell walls form two thin overlapping shells which fit together as in a soapbox. The walls are embedded with silicon thus the walls are indestructible. Thus, diatoms have left behind large amount of cell wall deposits in their habitat. This accumulation over billions of years is referred to as diatomaceous earth. Being gritty this oil is used in polishing, filtration of oils and syrups. Diatoms are thatch of producers in the oceans. 2.2.2 Dianoflagellates These organisms are mostly marine and photosynthetic. They appear yellow, green, brown, blue or red, depending on the main pigments present in their cells. The cell wall has stiff cellulose plates on the outer surface. Most of them have two flagella, one lies longitudinally and the other transversely in a furrow between the wall plates. Very often, red dinoflagellates, example. Pinolax undergo such rapid multiplication that they make the sea appear red, red tides. Toxins released by such large numbers may even kill other marine animals such as fishes. 2.2.3 Euglenoids, majority of them are freshwater organisms found in stagnant water. Instead of a cell wall, they have a protein-rich layer called pollicle, which makes their body flexible. They have two flagella, a short and a long one. Though they are photosynthetic in the presence of sunlight, when deprived of sunlight they behave like heterotrophs by predating on other smaller organisms. Interestingly, the pigments of euglenoids are identical to those present in higher plants. Example. Euglena, figure 2.4a, on your screen. 2.2.4 Slime Molds Slime molds are saprophytic protists. The body moves along decaying twigs and leaves engulfing organic material. Under suitable conditions, they form an aggregation called plasmodium, which may grow and spread over several feet. 
During unfavorable conditions, the plasmodium differentiates and forms fruiting bodies bearing spores at their tips. The spores possess two walls. They are extremely resistant and survive for many years, even under adverse conditions. The spores are dispersed by air currents. 2.2.5 Protozoans All protozoans are heterotrophs and live as predators or parasites. They are believed to be primitive relatives of animals. There are four major groups of protozoans. Amoeboid protozoans. These organisms live in freshwater, seawater or moist soil. They move and capture. They prey by putting out pseudopodia, false feet, as an amoeba. Marine forms have silica shells on their surface. Some of them such as entomoba or parasites. Flagellated protozoans. The members of this group are either free-living or parasitic. They have flagella. The parasitic forms cause diseases such as sleeping sickness. Example. Trypanosoma.ciliated protozoans. These are aquatic, actively moving organisms because of the presence of thousands of cilia. They have a cavity, gullet, that opens to the outside of the cell surface. The coordinated movement of rows of cilia causes the water lot and with food to be steered into the gullet. Example. Paramosium, figure 2.4b. Sporzins. This includes diverse organisms that have an infectious spore-like stage in their life cycle. The most notorious is PLASMODIUM malarial parasite, which causes malaria which has a staggering effect on the human population. 2.3 Kingdom Fungi The fungi constitute a unique kingdom of heterotrophic organisms. They show a great diversity in morphology and habitat. When your bread develops mold or your orange rots it is because of fungi. The common mushroom you eat and toadstools are also fungi. White spots seen on mustard leaves are due to a parasitic fungus. Some unicellular fungi e.g., yeast are used to make bread and beer. Other fungi cause diseases in plants and animals. Wheat rust causing pecinia is an important example. Some are the source of antibiotics, e.g., penicillium. Fungi are cosmopolitan and occur in air, water, soil and on animals and plants. They prefer to grow in warm and humid places. Have you ever wondered why we keep food in the refrigerator? Yes, it is to prevent food from going bad, due to bacterial or fungal infections. With the exception of yeasts which are unicellular, fungi are filamentous. Their bodies consist of long, slender thread-like structures called hyphae. The network of hyphae is known as mycelium. Some hyphae are continuous tubes filled with multinucleated cytoplasm. These are called coenocytic hyphae. Others have septi across walls in their hyphae. The cell walls of fungi are composed of chitin and polysaccharides. Most fungi are heterotrophic and absorb soluble organic matter from dead substrates, and hence are called saprophytes. Those that depend on living plants and animals are called parasites. They can also live as symbionts in association with algae, as lichensin with roots of higher plants, as mycorrhiza. Reproduction in fungi can take place by vegetative means fragmentation, fission, and budding. Asexual reproduction is by spores. Call canidae are sporangiospers or zoospers, and sexual reproduction is by euspers, ascospers, and basidiospers. The various spores are reproduced in distinct structures called fruiting bodies. The sexual cycle involves the following three steps i fusion of protoplasms between two model or non model gametes called plasmogamy. i fusion of two nuclei called karyogamy. e meiosis and zygote, resulting in haploid spores. when a fungus reproduces sexually, two haploid hyphae of compatible mating types come together and fuse. In some fungi the fusion of two haploid cells immediately results in diploid cells, 2N. However, in other fungi, ascomacetes and basidiomacetes, an intervening dicaryotic stage, N plus N i.e. two nuclei per cell, occurs. Such a condition is called a dicaryonid. The phase is caledicaryophis of fungus. Later, the parental nuclei fuse and the cells become diploid. The fungi form fruiting bodies in which reduction division occurs, leading to formation of haploid spores. The morphology of the mycelium, mode of spore in fruiting bodies, form the basis for the division of the kingdom into various classes. 2.3.1 Phacomacetes Members of phacomacetes are found in aquatic habitats and on decaying wood in moist and damp places, or as obligate parasites on plants. The mycelium is acetate and coenocytic. Asexual reproduction takes place by zoospers, model, or by planospers, non-model. These spores are endogenously produced in sporangium. Zygospores are formed by fusion of two gametes. The zygomates are similar in morphology, isogamous, or dissimilar, and isogamous or ugamous. Some common examples are mucor, figure 2.5a, rhizopus, the breed mold mentioned earlier, and albugo, the parasitic fungin mustard. 2.3.2 Scomacetes, commonly known as sac fungi, the scomacetes are unicellular, e.g., yeast, sacharomyces, or multicellular, e.g., penicillium. They are saprophytic, decompressors parasitic or coprophilus, growing on dung, mycelium, is branched and septate. The sexual spores are canidia produced exogenously on the special mycelium called conidiophores. Canidia germination produce mycelium. Sexual spores are called ascospores, which are produced endogenously in sac-like acai, singular ascus. 
These acai are arranged in different types of fruiting bodies called ascocarps. Some examples are Aspergillus, figure 2.5b, Claviceps, and Neurospora. Neurospora is used extensively in biochemical and genetic work. Many members like morals and ruffles are edible and are considered delicacies. 2.3.3 Basidiomycetes, commonly known forms of Basidiomycetes are mushrooms, bracket fungi or puffballs. They grow in soil, on logs and tree stumps, and in living plant bodies as parasites, e.g., rusts and smuts. The mycelium is branched and septate. These sexual spores are generally not found, but vegetative reproduction by fragmentation is common. The sex organs are absent but plasmogamy is brought about by the fusion of two vegetative or somatic cells of different strains or genotypes. The resultant structure is dicaryotic which ultimately gives rise to basidium. Karyogamy and meiosis take place in the basidium producing four basidiospores. The basidiospores are exogenously produced on the basidium, PL, basidia. The basidia are arranged in fruiting bodies called basidiocarps. Some common members are Agaricus, Mushroom, Figure 2.5c, Ocelago, Smut, and Pachinia, Rist Fungus, 2.3.4 Deuteromycetes, commonly known as imperfect fungi because only the asexual or vegetative phases of these fungi are known. When the sexual forms of these fungi were discovered they were moved into classes they rightly belong to. It is also possible that the asexual and vegetative stage have been given one name, and placed under Deuteromycetes, and the sexual stage another, and placed under another class. Later when the linkages were established, the fungi were correctly identified and moved out of deuteromycetes. Once perfect sexual stages of members of deuteromycetes were discovered they were often moved to ascomycetes and basidiomycetes. The deuteromycetes reproduce only by asexual sporescin as canidia. The mycelium is septate and branched. Some members are saprophytes or parasites while a large number of them are decomposers of litter and help in mineral cycling. Some examples are Aralternaria, Kalatotrichum and Turchiderma. 2.4 Kingdom Plantae. Kingdom Plantae includes all eukaryotic chlorophyll containing organisms commonly called plants. A few members are partially heterotrophic, such as the insectivorous plants or parasites. The Dorotin Venus flytrap are examples of insectivorous plants, and Cascuta is a parasite. The plant cells have an eukaryotic structure with prominent chloroplasts and cell wall mainly made of cellulose. You will study the eukaryotic cell structure in detail in Chapter 8. Plantae includes algae bryophytes, gyrodophytes, gymnosperms and angiosperms. Life cycle of plants has two distinct phases, the diploid sporophytic and the haploid gametophytic, that alternate with each other. The lengths of the haploid and diploid phases, and whether these phases are free living or dependent on others, vary among different groups in plants. This phenomenon is called alternation of generation. You will study further details of this kingdom in chapter 3. 2.5 Kingdom Animalia. This kingdom is characterized by heterotrophic eukaryotic organisms that are multicellular, and their cells lack cell walls. They directly or indirectly depend on plants for food. They digest their food in an internal cavity and store food reserves as glycogen or fat. Their mode of nutrition is holozoic by ingestion of food. They follow a definite growth pattern and grow into adults that have a definite shape and size. Higher forms show elaborate sensory and neurometer mechanisms. Most of them are capable of locomotion. The sexual reproduction is by copulation of male and female, followed by embryological development. Salient features of various phyla are described in Chapter 4. 2.6 Viruses, Viroids and Lichens. In the Five Kingdom classification of Whitaker, there is no mention of some cellular organisms like viruses and viroids and lichens. These are briefly introduced here. All of us who have suffered the ill effects of the common cold or flu know what effects viruses can have on us, even if we do not associate it with our condition. Viruses did not find a place in classification, since they are not truly living if we understand living as those organisms that have a cell structure. The viruses are non-cellular organisms that are characterized by having an inert crystalline structure outside the living cell. Once they. Viroids. In 1971 Theo Diener discovered a new infectious agent that was smaller than viruses, and caused potato spindle tuber disease. It was found to be a free RNA, it lacked the protein coat that is found in viruses, hence the name viroid. The RNA of the viroid was of low molecular weight. Lichens. Lichens are symbiotic associations i.e. mutually useful associations between algae and fungi. The algal component is known as phycobiont and fungal component as mycobiont, which are autotrophic and heterotrophic, respectively. Algae prepare food for fungi and fungi, provide shelter and absorb mineral nutrients and water for its partner. So close is their association that if one saw lichen in nature, one would never imagine that they had two different organisms within them. Lichens are very good pollution indicators they do not grow in polluted areas. Summary, the biological classification of plants and animals was first proposed by Aristotle on the basis of simple morphological characters. Linnaeus later classified all living organisms into two kingdoms Plantae and Animalia. Whitaker proposed an elaborate five-kingdom classification Minera, Protista, Fungi, Plantae and Animalia. 
The main criteria of the Five Kingdom classification were cell structure, body organization, mode of nutrition and reproduction, and phylogenetic relationships. In the Five Kingdom classification, bacteria are included in Kingdom Minera. Bacteria are cosmopolitan in distribution. These organisms show the most extensive metabolic diversity. Bacteria may be autotrophic or heterotrophic in their mode of nutrition. Kingdom Protista includes all single-celled eukaryotes such as Schrissophytes, Dianoflagellates, Euglenoids, Slime Molds and Protozoans. Protists have defined nucleus and other membrane-bound organelles. They reproduce both asexually and sexually. Members of Kingdom Fungi show a great diversity in structures and habitat. Most fungi are saprophytic in their mode of nutrition. They show asexual and sexual reproduction. The Comocetes, Ascomocetes, Basidiomocetes and Deuteromocetes are the four classes under this kingdom. The plant includes all eukaryotic chlorophyll containing organisms. Algae, bryophytes, pteridophytes, gymnosperms, and angiosperms are included in this group. The life cycle of plants exhibit alternation of generations gametophytic and sporophytic generations. The heterotrophic eukaryotic multicellular organisms lacking a cell wall are included in the kingdom Animalia. The mode of nutrition of these organisms is holozoic. They reproduce mostly by the sexual mode. Some acellular organisms like viruses and viroids as well as thelogens are not included in the Five Kingdom system of classification. Viroids. In 1971, Theo Diener discovered a new infectious agent that was smaller than viruses and caused potato spindle tuber disease. It was found to be a free RNA, it lacked the protein coat that is found in viruses, hence the name viroid. The RNA of the viroid was of low molecular weight. Lichens. Lichens are symbiotic associations, i.e., mutually eusophil associations, between algae and fungi. The algal component is known as phycobiont and fungal component as mycobiont, which are autotrophic and heterotrophic, respectively. Algae prepare food for fungi and fungi, provide shelter and absorb mineral nutrients, and water for its partner. So close is their association that if one saw a lichen in nature, one will never imagine that they had two different organisms within them. Lichens are very good pollution indicators they do not grow in polluted areas. So this was the biological classification of organisms. And with that said until next time, good luck.